Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, today I'm going to talk about cellular home internet and specifically with this Peplink router modem con uh, combo here. What can it do for us and is it a lot better than the gateways that Verizon and T-Mobile provide for home internet use? Now, I've covered lots of videos on T-Mobile and lots of videos on Verizon home internet and they have a lot of great benefits. One of them is cost, but one of their biggest downsides is the hardware and the settings that they allow you to do. So, for example, one very common request is band locking. This PEP link provides that. So, I'll show you how you can do band locking with this. The next question is, how can I get my service into this guy? And so, this has um, a couple different ways that you can use the ISP to connect to it. So, the different types of WAN connections. So, First off, I did take the little cover off the bottom of it. So if you get a Peplink Balance 20X device, it already comes with a cellular modem built in. And once you take the little plate off, you can see they have these little flip up um, slots in here that take a, a card. And that is a full size SIM card that you can put in there. There's two of them for redundancy. So if it notices that one drops off or fails, it will automatically switch and pick whichever one has um, you know signal if the other one fails on it so you can set that up but the built-in one is only a 4g lte that's the biggest downside to it so it doesn't support the 5g stuff but that is solved by adding their expansion card this is um it comes blank in here but so this little mini um, expansion card i put a 5g um, expansion in there and that gives you two more sim cards here it's actually under another little cover that I took off um, but it gives you two SIM cards again, and those are again redundant SIM cards. And now what's cool is that you can use both of those SIM cards even simultaneously and use their speed fusion bonding to actually aggregate that bandwidth, and you can uh, use both of that bandwidth at the same time. But that's not where it ends. You actually have a uh, USB connection up here that you can hook up a hotspot or whatever else to it, and then on the back side, it has a standard WAN port that you can hook up a cable modem, fiber modem, DSL, whatever else you have that would hook in via Ethernet typically to your router. And then it has some LAN ports there for your local network. And of course, you can add other PepLink devices or other devices uh, to this, switches and whatnot, to uh, further expand the network. It does come included with a Wi Fi. Uh, router so it has uh, Wi-Fi 5 capability that it sends out as well but really what I want to show today is you know how do I actually plug in a SIM card and get it to work and can I plug in a Verizon home internet or T-Mobile home internet SIM card to this and does it work or do I have to mess with settings or is it not possible at all so to start with you can see this guy's already lit up and I did plug in a uh, Tello SIM card so I had a Tello data only SIM card I've used for some Internet of Things devices. You know, if you have a little pet tracker, GPS, trail cam, any of that kind of stuff, the uh, the Tello will work. And what I really like about the Tello SIM card is that it's very adjustable. And mine is actually just five bucks a month because I use the lowest tier. I have no voice. I have um, the minimum amount of data. And it's really just for me testing and playing with. Um, but so I use that and that's what I plugged into the bottom here and what I did was when I plugged it in I can go log into the device settings let me show you how you do that okay so obviously you need to be connected to the device either through Ethernet or Wi-Fi and then you can go to your web browser you type in 192.168.1.1 that is on the sticker on the bottom of this um, unit as well and then it has a login as well now what you'll notice first thing is it gives you this warning that your connection is not private. That is perfectly fine. That's just telling you that the um, cer certificate is not a signed online certificate. But you can click advanced and then click proceed to that site. And this gives you the PEP link login. All right, so by default, the password is admin admin. But the first time you log in, it forces you to change it to a unique new password. So I've already done that. And then lo and behold, here we go. You can see um, this is the dashboard. And it shows you that my uh, cellular 
is connected to Telo, so it recognizes as Telo. It tells you it's LTE, not 5G. I can click Details here, and it shows me that it's in SIM card A slot, and there's no SIM card in slot B. And then it gives me all kind of information about the SIM card, um, you know, numbers. And then it also tells me that I am on LTE band 2. And then you can see there my signal quality and um, IP address, all that kind of stuff is all, all in here. And that is helpful for you to understand what it is connected to. But then you can go in here to some further settings and we can look at um, band locking or changing some of that stuff. Now, uh, in here it also shows you just that um, you know the Wi-Fi is is on there, and I can go ahead and turn it off or whatnot. Um, but let's go in here to the network, and then again on here we can see that um, the second one here is cellular, and I can click on that. And now this is the uh, Tello connection that I'm on. And you can see that it's enabled. It's automatic. You could tell it to be for a specific carrier there. Um, you could assign a static DNS. And you can do this for each of these WAN connections. So this would be um, configurable for each different one uh, if you had multiple ones. You can do the IP pass-through. You can do um, down here, you can tell it what SIMs to use. You can tell it to alternate between them. So if you were trying to share data between them or whatnot, you can do all that kind of stuff in here. But this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because now you can start to um, do a selection based off of each SIM card. So we're on SIM card A and now I can do a custom selection and this is where you can see I can uncheck specific bands I do not want to connect to. So if you know you have you know, a band 12 and whenever you connect to it your internet uh, craps out or is super slow, you can say do not connect to that and now it will not do that anymore so that's you know one complaint about these home internet gateways is sometimes they do do that or they flip bands and uh, sometimes when they flip the bands they drop the connection when they do that as well so that is something that this gives you that the home internet devices do not um, and then again if you need to set up custom APN which some SIM cards that you buy, you might need to set up a um, custom APN if it doesn't configure itself automatically. This one took about 45 seconds or a minute after I plugged in the SIM card and it automatically configured and worked. I did not have to change any settings at all. Um, they were all default. I didn't have to do anything. The other thing you can do down here is on the signal threshold settings. This is where you can have this device intelligently switch between different WANs. So you can have it say, hey, if I get below three bars on this SIM card, I want you to switch to another WAN service. So that's something that you can set up here. Obviously, MTU is a setting. And then um, health checks uh, you can mess with if you need to really fine-tune when it determines if it has a good connection or not. So that's, in a nutshell, some of the settings here for this WAN stuff. And now let's see um, what speeds I get with this Tello one, I'm going to plug in the Verizon one, see if that works, if I have to mess with settings, and get speech for that as well. And then we'll do the same thing for the T-Mobile Home Internet. All right, so one quick note is for the SIM cards, you know, I got the Tello one, and it came with a full-size SIM, and then it drops down, has like a mini or micro, and then it has the nano SIM. Most devices use the Nano. These home internet devices use the Nano. My phone uses the Nano. So I am very used to throwing away the non-Nano pieces. And I um, luckily I saved it for the Tello ones. But when I put it, um, I had to put it back together, it doesn't stay together. It wants to like pop out. So I had to use a little piece of tape. So because I'm doing this for lots of them, I ended up buying this packet of uh, little adapters here. And what that comes with is... A little packet I forget how many I bought like maybe a 10 pack or something but it comes with adapters to convert a nano sim to a micro it gives you a nano to a full-size one which is what I need to use the most often and it has a little um, clear side that uh, helps it all snap together and stay together so it was super cheap I think it was like five bucks or something for all of these um, so if you're going to do this a lot like I am, you might want to consider buying this because 
uh, these devices take the different sizes and you'll need something that can convert your SIM card size uh, easily and robustly. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to stay down here, I'm in the basement of my house. And even though if you did happen to notice the signal strength and quality is really good in here in the basement, it's because I'm hooked it up to a booster, a cell phone booster, and that does not give me my best piece. My best piece is if I go up stairs to a loft, and that's where I'm going to do this testing so that I do it with my best signal possible. So let's head upstairs and do that testing. All right, so now I'm up here in the loft. You can see a couple of gateways here. Now, um, these are not hooked up to external antennas for this testing. I'm using just the gateways bare. I'm going to start with the Verizon 5G unit. This one is actually the um, Arcadian one. So they have two cubes. And the ASCII one, the one they actually had in the basement, that one has a physical SIM card. This one has an eSIM. So you can't take the SIM card out and put it in the PEP link, which I have right here on the floor below me. But So that's what I'm going to do the testing with this guy. And I connected directly to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi on it. And now let's run a quick test and see what type of speeds we get with that unit stocked up here. Okay, that's exactly what I expected. You know, they basically sort of throttled these guys on their C-band at around 300 megabits per second down and about 20 up. That's fairly typical from what I see. You can see the ping there, unloaded 31, loaded 84 and 360, jitter of 32. So those are things to remember there. But now let me switch over and connect to my Arcadian um, KBD21 on the T-Mobile. Okay, so now we are hooked up to the T-Mobile Arc. You can see that is, um, it shows you that I'm on a T-Mobile network. And obviously it does use a different server um, because of that. But um, you can see here, I'm getting around this 100. So I can go into the um, T-Mobile app and check. But this probably means I'm on the N71 band, not the N41. And up here, I'm right on the cusp of getting N41 uh, with just the stock unit. If I plug in my waveform antennas, I certainly lock on to it, but um, this can obviously hurt my speeds. What you'll see here is that my pings are way worse on T-Mobile. My speeds are also lower, uh, namely my download looks like my upload is actually fairly close to the uh, 20 I got before. So let me hop into the T-Mobile app real fast and just confirm what uh, bands I'm on. Okay, so you can see I'm on B2 for LTE. And I am on N41 actually for the 5G, so um, you know the signal looks okay. Signal to noise is reasonable. Um, I'm not great on on the LTE, but that's the speeds I'm getting right now for T-Mobile. So let's hop to the PEP link now and see what kind of performance it gives me. All right, so now I have the PEP link Balance 20X set up here. It still has just the Tello SIM card in there and the 4G LTE. Um, modem and so that one is going to limit us to the 4G bands but we'll test it real fast now Tello does use uh, T-Mobile as their um, carrier so um, here in the speed app you'll see that it says it's using the T-Mobile um, network uh, there for the connection so this should be a direct comparison to the Arcadian one but again this is using just LTE so let me um, run this test and then next I'm going to switch it over and I'm going to put it in the 5G um, slot and just see if I get a much better speed out of that modem versus the 4G modem. Okay, so there we go, 25 down and 3 up. So nothing crazy fast there to write home about. So let me just log in real fast to the PEP link and just check so we know exactly what bands we are on for this Tello so we can compare later. So... Looks like I'm on LTE band 66. You can see that um, my signal have good uh, signal strength, but signal to noise could be uh, certainly improved there. All right, so now it is on the 5G slot, and you can see here it shows you when it's on the other um, cellular uh, card, and then it does show me that I'm on the 5G uh, 41 band and the signal to noise of 12. And then the band 66 for my LTE anchor there. So now I know that I'm on the 5G for T-Mobile. 
let me go in here and remember the old one was about 25 and 7 or 8 was my best speed. Let's redo that here and see what we get on the peplink 5G. Okay, so now let's take the Verizon SIM card and let's put it in that same 5G modem that we just have the Tello in and see what it does. Obviously the Tello one uh, was nothing uh, spectacular. In fact, the upload was uh, slow. And, you know, the um, SIM cards have different priority levels. T-Mobile Home Internet and Verizon Home Internet are typically bottom of the tier. But I think even still, even though they're technically the bottom still, the third-party um, services like Tello, they often have even um, either other restrictions, throttles, or uh, further deprioritized on the network so they get slower speed. So I'm not too surprised that the Tello SIM is not that fast and is in fact slower than the um, the T-Mobile Home Internet Gateway. But let's put in the Verizon, have a uh, fair comparison of Home Internet SIM to Home Internet SIM with just different hardware. All right, so I put the Verizon Home Internet SIM card in and after doing the resetting stage there for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, something like that, I'm starting to see the connecting icon and the LTE below, uh, beside it. And I can see that it picked up that it's on Verizon Wireless and it right now is showing band 66. It's um, showing good signal strength, not the best um, signal to noise. I'm gonna let it keep doing its connecting thing uh, to see right now it has some promise it looks like it's going to work but let's wait and see all right so after several minutes really like half an hour probably close to it um, it is not connecting um, fully to the Verizon network it's not getting an IP address so you know obviously it sees uh, the Verizon network it hops on band 66 um, and it has good signal there but it is not fully connecting. So I'm thinking that Verizon is not allowing it to connect. So my next steps are to try to talk to Verizon, see if I can get them to do it. But let me hop over to T-Mobile Home Internet. And now just to make a note here, this is only for their home internet SIM cards. If you get any of their um, data SIM cards or like, you know, bring your own device plans or tablet plans, those type of plans that allow you to have your own device, those ones certainly will work in here. And the only trick I know on T-Mobile specifically is you need to um, have this Peplink device be the first device that you plug in, so let's say your hotspot um, SIM card um, plan, that SIM card needs to go in here first. If you plug it into another hotspot or something first, then it registers that device with that SIM card and they don't let you change it. So that's something to know, at least on T-Mobile, is that you uh, do want to get a new SIM card and plug it into this device first. So let me plug in my T-Mobile home internet SIM card and see if it will connect at all or not. All right, so with the T-Mobile SIM card in there for uh, a long time again, uh, several minutes, 10, 15, something like that, it is still not connecting. In fact, the um, details actually went away um, just a second ago, I had them pulled up and it showed it was on LTE and actually at the very beginning showed it was on 5G SA, so standalone 5G for a second now, showing there the LTE again, and it was showing that it was connecting to band 66 uh, for a while, but it is not completing the setup again, um, not getting an IP address, not getting internet, so... And that's what I heard about the T-Mobile one was that it does not work. Um, so I'm not surprised by that one. I'm a little surprised by the Verizon one because I thought it would work. But don't worry, guys. I am not going to give up uh, that easily. So let me do some more digging. Let me see if I can get uh, either of these home internet sims to work, either by talking to the carrier themselves or looking at other avenues to uh, make sure it gets um, authorized on their network. All right, so I will not give up that easily. I will keep um, at this and try to see if, if there's any ways I can get the Verizon or T-Mobile home internet SIM cards to work in this peplink, including uh, begging and pleading with the ISPs to see if they will allow a switch of the IMEI or not. So um, 
what I'll do here is show you one more thing that I think is really neat in here and that is the uh, peplink gives you a continuous log of what the uh, signal the cellular signal is like over time all right you can go to peplinkid.peplink.com and with that you can log in and get control of your device now you can go in here and um, have multiple different peplink devices that all support uh, this in control uh, too and you can get information about them you can set up the Wi-Fi you can have it all configured uh, remotely and online you can also remotely um, log into the admin page of course if the peplink device has internet access at the time but you can go in here and look at uh, various things including what the quality of the WAN connection was I like to go in here to the WAN quality reports and this shows you um, you know I had the device on earlier um, in the day and you can see how the um, cellular connection changed over time you have both latency you have signal quality you can see when I was on T-Mobile you can see when I was um, on uh, Verizon and this is um, kind of a neat um, thing here that you can also add like signal quality and number of bars uh, if you want to to show you just how good of a signal you had at the time and this is great for logging it if you think you have dropouts or something um, you can go in here and you can see that hey your signal changed you can even add some other things like your bands and um, you can export that and you can even list it and you can see that hey if my speed or my latency gets bad on certain bands you can go in there and adjust the settings to allow it to not connect to them so lots of options in there to mess with on this peplink device all right if i can't get the home internet sim cards to work on the peplink device i will go through some of the features as well as things like the speed fusion bonding where i aggregate multiple different WAN devices and add up all of their bandwidth speed to improve the speed of any one of my or all of my devices so i have a couple different um data only sim cards but i can buy more if i need to for the testing if you have specific questions uh, or comments about what you've done or how you've set up some stuff feel free to uh, reach out in the comments below i do read them and i try to get back to them so i look forward to hearing from you guys thanks for staying tuned